Welcome to Eatology. I'm Laura Lawson. I've got Isabella over here and Grace. Uh, they will be serving you guys some food today. Uh, what we do here at Eatology is we prepare paleo meals. Uh, we take, so ultimately what we do is we take foods that are not too typically healthy or we do meals that we enjoy like chili cheese fries and uh, pizzas and spaghetti. And we take those uh, meals and we recreate them using all natural healthy ingredients. And so our job is to reconstruct um, Paula Dean into fitness, and that's ultimately what we excel at. Uh, so this is an eatology meal, uh, and this is not. And so therein lies the problem, right? We are going to look at a couple different things today. So what my goal for you, thank you, what my goal for you guys today is to be able to leave here knowing how to eat carbs to get the results that you want. Because I mean, ultimately, just as you were saying earlier, you hear about carbs. It's always about carbs, right? So, you know, you know, where does that put us? And ultimately, what is a carb? Well, let's take a look at that. Uh, a, a little bit about the portion control method that we're gonna be, that we use is called the zone. Dr. Barry Sears came up with the zone uh, back in about the 70s, 80s, and uh, what what his philosophy was was he believed that he could use food in place of drugs in the human body in order to regulate hormones. And so what he came up with as a serving was a block. So one serving, can everybody see that in my book? Right, I'm making up for this. Awesome handwriting. One serving equals one block. So everything that we'll talk about today is going to be called block in block terms. And what a block is ultimately, what are macros? You can shout them out. What's a macronutrient? What composes, what comprises food? Proteins. We've got some proteins. Here. Um, carbohydrates and fats. Proteins, carbs, and fats. Exactly true. Just the color, so I'm colors together. That's okay. So in one block of protein, there is going to be seven grams. In carbs, there will be nine grams. And in fat, there's going to be 1.5 grams. And this is a block. So this is basically a serving. And from here, we will eat in increments of these numbers. So it needs to be a, in a one to one to one ratio, all right? So if we are just having, let's say, uh, if we're having seven grams of protein, 14 grams of carb, and 1.5 grams of fat, is that gonna be a block? No, because it's not in the one to one ratio. It would be one, two, and one. What about uh, 14, 18, three? Two bucks, perfect, y'all got it. Ooh, good job. Free meal, apple cider meat with a burger with sweet hash and broccoli, there you go. See, now y'all are gonna be playing the game now, huh? See, incentives here. Uh, so yes, this is a one block and y'all get the idea with the two block and the three block. So, what does nine grams look like? You know, if you want to go to a meat buzz and have a nine gram tortilla, I mean, you know, what does that look like, right? Well, Dr. Barry Sears did something really wonderful for us. Uh, would y'all like to pass out the block charts? And he has uh, basically devised a little chart, which is part right here. And that chart is going to be quite a few foods broken down into two different categories. One's going to be, well, okay, let me back up, let me back up a little bit. So one thing about the zone is that you can zone any type of food. You can put any type of food into 791.5, right? Like, ultimately, all carbs will have nine, you'll, you'll understand what I'm saying right there on that? Uh, you can put these ratios, you, you uh, I'm sorry, it's been a really long day. <laughs> you can zone any type of food using the ratio 791.5 and Ultimately, what Dr. Barry Sears has done, he's broken everything down into a protein, carbohydrate categories, and our fat category. All right? And so if y'all are looking at your little sheets, here's a much easier sheet for me to see. Our protein, carb, fat. You have two different sides. You have one side that's a favorable carbohydrate side, and the other side is going to be the unfavorable carbohydrate side. Now, you'll notice that so what, what is paleo? Do y'all see some paleo foods on this sheet? 
on the favorable carbohydrate side? Basically all natural um, stuff you can find out in the pasture. Basically. That would be true. <laughs> so yes, like anything that you could walk through the yeah. world and be able to pick up and Hunter eat. Gatherer type. Exactly true. So on our, like, so as Dr. Barry Sears has classified favorable carbohydrates, I mean, you know, broccoli, that would be paleo. You can walk through and you can grab broccoli. What about uh, asparagus? Yep. What about some, what about chicken breast? Yes. Uh, but, you know, but what about, uh, let's see what over here. And so that's a great, that's a great point. Yes. And so even though what's on our, our block chart is favorable, it won't all be paleo. So we have to make that distinction, and that's a very important distinction to make. So Dr. Barry Sears' portion control is based on a glycemic index, where we want to take the very best foods, the, the natural foods, and we want to make that division. And so what we have right here, and if you all want to pass out this sheet, that would be great. So what we have right here is basically a little breakdown. Our, our vegetables, such as asparagus and celery, broccoli, spinach and cucumber. Then we have our fruits, cherries and apple, grapefruit, berries, peaches. And then we have our little higher starch category, like bananas and butternut squash, sweet potato, uh, your juices, uh, your honeys and agave. Dark chocolate will also be in this moderate category right here. And then we have our unpreferable category. Now this is, does not mean to not eat this. This just means to eat it a little bit less often, a little bit more responsibly. And pasta, cookies, cakes, breads, pretty much everything on this side of the table is gonna fall on this side of the dial. So I'll let you all grab your charts and take a look. Alcohol is also gonna be called, it's also gonna be a carbohydrate. So when we're looking at this, this is going to be our paleo category. All these foods over here will be paleo. Everything grows, it's natural, you can grab it. Over here, we don't have like a cookie tree. So therefore, we can zone all of this. And that's what he has done. Uh, with our block chart, let's say we wanted to have, how many uh, blocks is in one block of broccoli, according to Dr. Barry Sears? Two cups. Yep. What about when it's cooked? One and one and four. Good job. Mentoring the stomach pizza with carrot fries. Thank you. You're welcome. And measuring your pizza with carrot fries. So ultimately, what we're saying, what's equal to nine grams is going to be our two cups of raw broccoli. Uh, one nine-inch cucumber, uh, seven cherries, one half apple, uh, one half peach. So the block chart is going to give you a little bit more precise measurements than our rule of thumb. The rule of thumb is really great when you know maybe you're on a date and you don't want to whip out your block chart. You can easily memorize these numbers versus that uh, alternative. When in doubt, measure it out. So two cups will equal, uh, two cups of asparagus will equal nine grams. Uh, two cups of broccoli will equal nine grams. Fruits, three-fourths of a cup. So if you can't count out your berries, three-fourths of a cup of berries will equal nine grams. Do y'all see how y'all can pull those out into nine gram blocks? Same thing we can do over here. Uh, One-fourth cup of pasta, will equal nine grams. And so all of these increments, this makes it a whole lot easier to remember what the increments are when you don't have this handy. Um, something, can you get me a rag so I can wipe part of that off? Uh, one thing that's really important, and I think one of the neatest things about paleo is really why we eat paleo. Now. When we're eating something like a cucumber or you know broccoli, thank you very much, uh, asparagus, you know that's like hard fibrous food. You know when we eat that, it takes a lot of work, a lot of energy for our bodies to break that down. So uh, like, uh, sorry, 
I, my, I myself have been at my mother's house and I've taken like my salad trimmings and cut that up and put it into the sink and it stopped up our gar garbage disposal. So what happened with that was we had to call the plumber out and that machine could not break through that food. But yet when we eat that food, our bodies, it breaks it down. So our bodies can do something that that machine cannot do. So think about how much work that takes for our bodies to break down all of that, uh, um, that carbohydrate. So there's a very big difference if you think about maybe yogurt or a banana uh, compared to the work that you know celery would do in a blender, right? So the more of these types of, well, I mean, really these types of uh, carbs that we choose to eat, the leaner we're going to get, the quicker. Does that make sense? Uh, you know, if you put bread in a blender, it gets pretty quick, right? It's not a lot of resistance. Same thing with the amount. So let's take a look at the amounts. For our vegetables, we have quite a bit, like two cups is quite a bit of, quite a bit of food right there. Uh, we've got, So the amount of mass also that you're able to eat per block is significantly larger here than here. And so when they say don't eat carbs, they're really talking about this, this carb right here. They're really not even the same thing because these are gonna get you leaner and these are definitely not going to get you leaner. Um, so yes, don't eat fake food carbs like this, but definitely love your broccoli, love your celery. It's definitely good for you. So does that make sense? The amount of mass, a, and then B, the uh, amount of work your body has to do to break food down. It's pretty neat, right? It's pretty cool. Not to mention, when you're eating foods in this category, you'll typically lose about mm, five to seven pounds of body fat a week. Down here, it's gonna be a little bit slower, uh, closer to about four to six pounds. Down here in this category, we're about two to three pounds per week. If you ate meals that consisted entirely, like if, you, if all you ate was your protein, carb, and fat, and your carb source was vegetable, we're looking at about five or seven pounds of fat off a week. Fruits, carb source, fruit, the four to six, two to three. And if you eat your carbs in this category and you're still zoning them, you won't gain bad body fat. So ultimately, if you still zone them, you wouldn't necessarily gain bad body fat, but you could have your pasta at all of your meals. Does that make sense? So what does like a meal actually look like? Let's, we'll, we're gonna build a meal real quick, then we're gonna learn how, how we eat this when we do eat it, because let's face it, we're all going to eat this type of thing at some point, right? I mean, ice cream, who doesn't love ice cream? We're gonna eat it, so how can we eat it and not gain bad body fat from it? Um, let's see. So protein, carb, and fat. And let's use the block chart for it. So using the block chart, what type of protein would you guys like to build a two block meal with? So we're gonna do two blocks. What's your protein of choice? Egg? All right, so let's say egg white. How many egg whites can we have in a, in a two block meal? Four. Correct, very good job. So eggs. Or egg white. Uh, what about our carb? What carb would you guys like? Anything you want. Spinach. Spinach. All right. And how much spinach? For one, well, are you gonna have, you can split it up. So you can do one block of spinach, you can, you can do, you can do one glass of wine. One glass of wine. Hmm? Now, see, now y'all are talking. Now you're smiling, huh? <laughs> yeah, the light went off. See, it's neat. I mean, and I guess you could take the spinach out entirely and you have two glasses of wine. <laughs> so, <laughs> see how it works? Mm -hmm. but that's neat, though, right? And, like, you know, literally, if you wanted to eat this entire pint of ice cream, what would you have to do to be able to do that? So, if we're going to uh, one fourth it out, there are, it's a, uh, there are four one half cups in here. Okay, so there are two cups. 
how many how many how many blocks is this then? Is what I'm asking. Eight. Eight. So how many ounces of chicken per se would we need to eat? Eight. And you could have you now. I wouldn't say that that would be a thing that you would want to do often, but you will be hormonally balanced. Do you understand what what I'm saying on that? And another important thing on this, we don't like most most females are going to eat between 10 and 12 total blocks per day. Most males will eat about 15 to 18 total blocks per day. So however you want to get those in, uh, typically breaking them down into two block meals for a female tends to work pretty well. Three block meals for males tends to work pretty well. That also kind of depends on how many meals you have time for in a day. Uh, but ultimately, you know, like on Thanksgiving, Christmas, and holidays, it gives you freedom. And that's why I like the zone, because it lets you eat the things that you, you know, you know, the things that we find pleasure in eating, and it doesn't restrict you from, you know, that can't feeling. Uh, but back to our example. So, yes, yeah, spinach. And how many blocks of spinach is one block? Raw or cooked? Whichever one you like. If you want to go for raw, that's even better. Four cups. Four cups. So last minute, right? Mm hmm What about what's the other card gonna be? Something fun. Y'all can flip it over to the other side. Give me a non favorable carbohydrate. Bread. Bread? Yep, you have a slice of bread. Uh what's what's the block on it? Half a slice. One half slice. Alright, what's your fat gonna be? Probably the olive oil, the cookies. That'll work. <laughs> How much uh, EVOO? Uh, half a tablespoon. One half a teaspoon, I'm sorry. One half teaspoon. So you'll see how we can build a meal out of that? Two blocks or one. It's going to be one teaspoon, huh? And so the bread will be a slice. And, uh, well, it's spinach, it's the other card. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at, uh, you know, when we're out and we're like living life, like this is not realistic. You know, it's not realistic for most people to break stuff down and it's not really even fun. And, you know, one thing for me, like I love food and I, you know, my mother is a chef and, you know, I've grown up around food. You know, we find a lot of community around food and it's hard because it's also at the end of the day what kills us. And like most people in America in particular will die from some, some food related, related illness. And, uh, that you know really puts us in a hard predicament. So what do we do? How do we balance that out and not, you know, and still feel like we have freedom when we when we eat? Um, we have pre-measured out. The, are these one ounces? So we have our chicken right here, one ounce each. So how many blocks do we have right up here? Two. Yep. And so this is going to be the protein that we are going to use for anything that we want to build over here. Now there's a couple of ways to do this, and I'm going to try to do it. The block, the block chart is the very easiest way to do it. You don't have to think, you don't have to do numbers. Who likes numbers? Anybody like numbers? Nope. That's great news because you just fly right through that little section. This is the easiest way to do it. Um, it's not always practical because you won't always have it. Um, and it's not that difficult to zone out uh, using carbs. So there's a very common food, and if y'all want to start heating or plating the meals, uh, there's a very common food uh, combination, I suppose, which is actually called the combo food, which is going to have, like cookies, it's going to have a lot of carbohydrate, it's going to have a lot of fat too, right? Uh, same thing with cakes and breads. Now things like tortillas, that's pretty much just like a carbohydrate. It's not going to have a whole lot of fat in it. Um, same thing for, with rice and oatmeal. But our combo foods are things like pizzas and you know grandma's casserole, uh, pecan pie, oatmeal. Uh, oatmeal, it's not oatmeal. <laughs> uh, ice cream. Uh, those things that have a lot of carb, they have a lot of fat, they might very well have a lot of protein because this will as well as it's dairy. These combo foods are kind of the probably the most yummy things to eat. So how do we kind of balance that out? I can't think of any exceptions, I'm sure there are some, 
but almost all combo foods are going to be classified as a carb. Fried foods, when you look at the actual uh, nutri nu the nutrition breakdown of uh, fried foods, they're really gonna be carbs. You think they're really high in fat, which they are, but not as high as they will be in carbohydrate. So that makes our job a little bit easier. Uh, one thing that we want to do is we want to keep foods in one category with the exception of dairy uh, in some cases. Uh, but for our purposes today, we're gonna classify everything as either a protein, a carb, or a fat. And on this table, I don't have any protein over here. Donut, is donut protein? No. Uh, and if I didn't know what to classify it as, I do have my, my nutrition label right here. So right here, I have total fat, 24 grams, total carb, 47 grams, protein, four grams. What's the highest? The carb. So therefore, it's a carbohydrate. Now, the trick is to find out how many blocks are in this little bag of donuts, all right? So in 40, so we have nine grams. How many times will nine go into 47? Five times. With a little bit left over, that's true. So there are six donuts in our little pack. I'd say it's pretty safe to say that since there are basically five blocks in a little bag, basically one donut is gonna be a block of carb. So if you are having a three block meal, you could have three donuts. Is the serving all six? Or is it, or is there uh, two what, servings in the yeah, I think it's actually- the serving is all is, six? Yep, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And the same thing for uh, well, bunions, bunions. <laughs> yes, I said that right, they have to think about it. Uh, 13 pieces is going to be a serving. 19 grams and 13 pieces. So how many blocks and 13 pieces? Roughly, well, I'm like very closely to roughly two. Do you all understand how I did that? Mm -hmm. So pretty easy. So we have basically, you can use it with the nutrition facts, you can use it with the block chart, and then when you have neither, maybe there's a bowl of onions, and you don't have either, you can cup it out. Easy, so you would use one fourth. So three different ways to get the same answer. And the important thing, especially, is being able to be consistent. So whichever, whichever method you use, whether, it, in, even if you use a combination of all three, Making sure that, uh, you know, who's ever tried to you know, measure out their uh, peanut butter and, you know, it says like, you know, one tablespoon or one teaspoon or, and, you know, it's like you got the whole, you know, it's, it's gob up there on that spoon. You know, okay, if you're going to gob it up on the spoon, that's fine. Be consistent with the gob. You know, don't sometimes level it off and then sometimes have, be consistent. And the important thing with that is the more consistent you are with knowing what you put into your body, the more we are able to help you identify what it is that you need to change or what we need, we need to change uh, in order to get a result if you're not getting the result the result you're, you're looking for. Does that make sense? Um, so let's say we wanted, okay, let's look at the popcorn. Popcorn. So two and a half cups is a serving. There are 2.5 ser servings in the bag of popcorn. Uh, 13 carbs. So how many blocks, what is a one block of, how much popcorn can I have for one block? There are uh, probably a cup and a quarter or something. two and a half cups, total carb is 13 grams. So it's a, it's gonna be right under two and a half cups, of uh, one and a half cups. Mm -hmm. That's quite a bit of popcorn for one block. Eat that with a little bit of chicken. Mm -hmm. Pretty yummy, right? My meals are gonna look real good at the end of all this, right? Um, and then Snickers. Snickers is kind of a fun one too. Uh, 29 grams of carb. So how many times will, how, how many blocks are in a? Okay, that would be, okay, so one, they're, they're considering this to be actually 29 grams right here. This is 29 grams. And what is that? So only that is a block right there. So when you have that compared to two cups of, what is it, four cups of spinach, see the amount of the mass? Like that's all, your body's having to break all that down 
and this is pretty soft. And then that spinach is not. It's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any questions on this? Are y'all ready to eat some fine onions? Fine onions, I did. And I don't know why I keep using that as my example since that's the one I don't like the most. But we're, we're going to go with it. Uh, oh, all right. So now let's take a look at um, how, how are those? Which ones are you putting up first? And that's why you shouldn't do it often. Uh, when you're eating foods like this, it's something that you're doing on occasion. Uh, you know, you want the majority of your meals, of, I mean, by, by far the majority of your meals, to be foods that are uh, more simple. Like even tortillas and rice and things that are easier to categorize. Right. But that's just not how it always falls. And so when you are eating things like that, stick with the carbs because the carbs are what are going to have the most, uh, I don't want to say like negative effects, but they're going to be the ones Fats aren't bad, fats are good. We, we like fats, I mean, fake food fats, they're not healthy for you, but they're not nearly as uh, damaging on your body as carbohydrates can be, especially when eaten out of proportion. So if, you're, if you are going to splurge on anything, on, on any of the macros, that's actually a great one to do it on. Definitely better than protein. Uh, when you have too much protein, you end up, uh, Basically, you can't really eat too much fat. Fats are good. In, well, <laughs> it, 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 it's a, and it's a fake food fat, so yeah. it's still a little bit different. Right. But the carbohydrates are what what's going to cause you to go into uh, basically out of, out of hormonal balance. Uh, so it puts you into sugar burning instead of fat burning. Yes. Yes. Exactly true. So ultimately, and I'll, we'll go ahead and touch base on that because that's a good question and we, we can definitely take a look at that for sure. So what, what our goal is, ultimately, we want to be eating every three hours. Why do we want to eat three hours? Have y'all heard, you know, you need to eat small meals multiple times a day? Right, and so why? Why should we do that? Like, what? Mm-hmm. But do y'all know, like, what the cause of that is? Proteins digest in uh, about three hours that's digest in about three hours so when I eat a meal in three hours my proteins and my fat they will be digested in my belly but carbohydrates they start digesting instantly once you even put them in the mouth they will be digested very well in four to six minutes and so this is the problem this is the exact problem that dr. Barry Sears was trying to avoid uh, what this will do because of the glycemic index when you eat a meal every three hours, your blood sugar is going to spike. And then after about the three hour period, it's gonna start going down again. It spikes, and basically you have this sinusoidal wave throughout the whole day. And every time that you reach this point right here, you get tired. You know, you, like that two o'clock crash when people start taking five hour energies and stuff like that. This right here, um, you know what also happens here? This is also where you get fatter. You start storing body fat at that point. And so that's what Dr. Barry Sears is trying to avoid. So what he was hoping to do was create a, basically like an emulsion of all of these that would balance it out. It's exactly the truth. So he was trying to uh, slow down the digestion of the carbohydrates to where it would all digest in about three hours. And so really, that's ultimately, the, like without going into a whole lot of science, that's ultimately why we are wanting, to, we are more concerned with the carbohydrates than the fats. Does that make sense? So that is ultimately like, that's the zone right there. It's really awesome. And it really, it works fast. And that's the best part. I mean like, think about those results. Five to seven pounds in a week. I mean, that's results every single day. That's results every three days. And so, when you're getting results like that, I mean, it's just it's a good thing for your book right there. It's worth the effort. 
and it's, it's motivating. And uh, you know, it's nothing special. You know, like the meals that we cook here at Eology, they're just, it's just whole food. It's all natural food. It's not anything, uh, it's not any new way of eating. It's just the foods that God has put on this planet for us to eat. And when we eat them responsibly, that's what happens. And uh, it's pretty neat. But that was a very good question. Anybody else have any questions? You said after the, the three hour period, like you tend to have a little bit of fatigue and whatnot as it starts to happen. What if somebody has a meal and it happens immediately after eating the meal? Is that an indication that it was a way too heavy on the carb side? Yes, exactly true. Mm -hmm. It's exactly true. <laughs> Yeah, it happens a lot, huh? <laughs> you are welcome to pass this out. And are those the order? Yes, they're gonna. They're all in one tin. So from left to right, we need pepper to eat that. Sorry, chicken. Could you have my hat? Okay. So, I have good news. Oh yes, absolutely. So. That would be good. No, I would say that would be it. one of the exceptions would be that type of thing. Yes, you have your protein in there. Yes, I would say that would be your protein. And then you, you still technically need to count the carb around, you know, it will be high in carb. So I would count that. I mean, if you're eating but probably about two ounces of a chicken tender, I mean, yeah. uh, I would say probably, well, you know, whenever I don't know something, we can Google it. Uh, if anybody has a phone, they want to. Plug into Google. Uh, anybody has a phone? Uh, the app I've always used is uh, LifeSum and uh, My Fitness Mount. Yes, and those work. Those work great too. Very, very well. Can you actually put in your own homemade food? Oh, okay. Well, I would use my phone. Okay. And so yeah, when when in doubt, like you know. Getting those answers, I mean, it's just, it's easy to do, and it really, it makes the difference, because trust me, I'm a two percenter, and I have done the whole, this thing six times a day for all my meals, and it does work. But, you know, when I start adding too much fat, or too much, and I basically, I lose my ratios right here, it does make a difference, and it's really crazy, because you really wouldn't think that it would impact us that much, but it really does. He hit it on the head when he went with the 79, 1.5. So ultimately, what that brings us to, uh, what you guys are eating right now if, as the food comes out, uh, we have the pepperoni pizza. Uh, a little bit about what Eology does is we, we try to make eating easier and we try to make it really yummy. Uh, you know, for myself, I think you have to enjoy the foods that you're eating in order to be able to, uh, you know, stick to it. Uh, we have a pepperoni pizza with sweet potato fries, a white chicken chili on a squash, on a yellow squash bed with cilantro lime rice. And we have a chili cheese fry. So for these three, what we try to do is we try to trick you. We try to sub things out. Uh, let's say our pepperoni pizza. What on pizza, typically, like a Domino's, would you want to avoid? The bread. The bread, probably, probably the bread. The pineapple. The pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> the heavy amounts of the cheese. cheese. Yeah, probably the, the cheese quality, and definitely true. Uh, so for our pepperoni pizza, we have used a uh, turkey and egg white crust. So it is 50% egg white, 50% turkey. And then we roast all of our fries. Our white chicken chili with cilantro lime rice. Uh, what we might want to avoid in that meal normally would be rice. Uh, we make all of our rice with cauliflower. Did y'all get the rice in there? Mm -hmm. Very good. Yummy? Mm -hmm. Our chili cheese fry is probably one of our most popular meals. Uh, Love the chili cheese fry. And then again, you know, just subbing out clean ingredients for your traditional greasy chili cheese fry dish. We have. I was like, it's all stuck together. 
we're going to have a little contest here in a second once they have this next plate passed out to you guys. Now, if you've played this game before, you can't participate again. But uh, if you haven't played the game before, we're going to rock and roll. We're going to pass out our bread. So we have a bread line that is uh, made out of 95% of something. So if you can guess what it is made out of 95%, then you will win a free meal. So, so we're guessing what the bread is made of? What it, the bread is made of, yeah, the bread. Yeah. It's nothing crazy. So. Hmm? It is, is it actually green or is it? Uh, y'all can taste it first and then y'all can, kind of, can tell me. So it'll be coming out here in just a second. No, but I was just kind of giving you a little preface on which are real. It's really good. Yes, it's very good. I will, uh, Grace, Yes. can you hand me the packet for the uh, order form? This thing? Yes. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to let you guys pass these out. So another thing about eology, now, our food is, okay, so this is really neat too. Microwave and oven safe, it's, uh, everything does come to us fresh. Once it comes to us, we will, uh, pr we prepare it and then we will freeze it. So it will come to you frozen and it will last about six months. Okay, you're, uh, you're saying you put this in the You microwave? can, yes, not the lids. If you put the lids in, it's going to be like 4th of July. But yes, you can put this container into the microwave. Mm -hmm. yep, it's pretty awesome. Uh, we have a huge menu, uh, probably about 450, 500 different items that we cook through. Uh, so it changes every week, Monday through Friday. Uh, to, you know, as you guys are all local, y'all can come in. Uh, y'all can select one meal and leave with one meal. Y'all can come and jump on a meal plan, whatever you guys want. Uh, you know, we try to be pretty flexible with uh, all of our packages. Uh, there is no pressure to buy today whatsoever. Uh, mainly, we want you guys to know how to, you know, you like how to use all this information, really being able to apply it to your life. Do y'all feel like y'all? Like, could y'all go and use a block chart and make a meal? Make a breakfast? Mm -hmm. A little bit? Maybe? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I missed the question. No, it's okay. Do y'all think that y'all can make a, make a meal with a block chart? Oh. So does mm -hmm. it have to be the egg white? It, no, it can be absolutely. You can use the whole egg, right? If you use a whole egg, it will be, one whole egg will be one block. It, with the yolk. And technically speaking. So you would still be two then? You, you could, yes. And if you're at a three block, you would have three or four blocks, you would have four. Um, so what we'll do to kind of like wrap up our class is once they're getting your uh, bread out, we will, I'll share the order forms with you guys if y'all are interested. We have some different packages. Uh, Isabella will be over here at this counter. Uh, she can take your order. She can help you with uh, package questions, finding packages. I will be up here if you guys want to come up here and uh, talk about food questions. If y'all want to uh, practice building meals, we can do that. Um, but I, I really want you to know how to build a meal, how to you know put a meal together because that's the most important thing. And I promise you, promise you, promise you, promise you, if y'all try this and y'all try it for three days, and you you eat foods that are only I don't want to say only, but yeah, just go, three days, vegetables, three days, you will be leaner. Like day two, so today is about Thursday. You start Friday. By the end of the day on Saturday, you will have, you, know, you will have gotten results. And that's cool, that's amazing. And then once you see that, it happens so fast, you're sold. Mm. I did, mm -hmm. So what you have here, uh, we've got, Two different sizes. We have our large meals and we have our medium meals. Uh, our medium meals are going to be our two block meals, and our large meals will be our three block meals. Uh, we have two different package styles. We have our recurring, and then we have our one time. If you want a one time uh, purchase, you that you will get ten percent off. And these are not the only meal packages. We can do five meals. We can do one meal. Uh, these are just kind of to give you ideas of what that looks like uh, for our. 10 meal, 10% off, no, I should say, for our 10% off package, uh, that will basically put your uh, two block meal down to about $9, and your three block meal down to about $11. If you choose to go for the recurring, uh, the way the recurring works, that's 20% off if you sign up today, and that will put your three block meal 
down you'll save two dollars on each meal and that will put your three dollar uh, your three block meal at about ten dollars ten dollars and thirty three cents to be exact and your two block meal will be eight dollars so that's kind of what that what that price point feels like right here uh, the way a recurring works is very casual there is no contract uh, Isabel will have many more details for you on that. But right now, I would really like to know what y'all think of the bread. Do y'all have so the bread? Good. It's so good. It's so good. It's pretty awesome, huh? I think that's why you even came here, huh? No, I tried after So which bread is this? This is the, I guess it's my job to tell you guys. Cinnamon. Cinnamon. Cinnamon layer cake. It's so beautiful. It's my favorite dish I think we have, period. It's so neat. There's so many things about it that are really cool, too. Um, so the cinnamon layer cake will be the one that is layered. Then, the jello, is that the barbecue chicken? Barbecue chicken pizza with roasted green beans. And then the chicken and chile. <laughs> yes, and bacon is on there. Yes. And then we have a chicken and chile pie. I think we have another bread coming out too, right? No more bread? There should be a big bread thing in there. I'm pretty sure, actually, I know there is. Unless you'll head in the very first round. Uh, yes? What did you want? What kind of cheese do you use? We actually have a great cheese uh, that we found. It's a, it's mozzarella is a really good, safe cheese to use. It tends to be the cleanest. Um, for the most part, as far as like finding good cheeses, as long as you kind of avoid the processed cheese section, like which is going to be all your pre-shredded craft type cheese. Yeah, the deli. The deli is so great. I mean, they can shred that stuff for you. That block of cheese is money. It's good for you for sure. So, I tried the veggie cheese. Veggie cheese. I don't even know anything it's awful. Yeah, it sounds kind of weird, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, probably like, it's not good. It doesn't sound very good. It was yellow, but it was yellow because of the ingredients. It's yellow number six. Oh, interesting. It was yellow because it was the ingredients. Did it melt? It, it, it took a minute. <laughs> AKA no. <laughs> um, but and it had like uh, uh, was it tapioca? It was tapioca. It's not tapioca. Uh, Did you get HB? No, I went to Kroger. Kroger? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, well, since you said mozzarella. Mozzarella is great. Yeah, mozzarella is pretty, it's pretty safe. But, like, really, any of the block cheeses that you get from HEB are going to be really good cheese. Okay. Sure. More so than the white cheeses. Yeah, the, the, the soft cheeses are, are higher in fat, and the yellow cheeses are just not as good for the yellow I don't know exactly. I love cheese, so I don't discriminate between cheeses. Okay. Um, but I'm, I'm assuming it might be something like a, either white and wheat. Debate on. Oh, okay. Well, so, I was thinking like the feta cheese, Parmesan cheese. They have a lot of flavor in them. That is true. That is salt, definitely true. They they have they have a little bit more flavor. Yes. And, you know, for the punch, the amount. Of they do, flavor. and you're right. They will be a little bit higher fat, yeah. but really, that's more like real cheese. So you know, it's like less. It's more. It's right. closer to being real cheese. Uh, but I mean, I'd say cheese is good to go. You're gonna have cheese. I mean, it's either going to agree with your body or it's not. Uh, you know, not a, a lot of, there, there's kind of like a split in whether dairy is paleo. Uh, we consider dairy to be primal. Uh, so some body types can eat it and some cannot. Uh, but yeah. I think that's mm-hmm. Yes, I would agree with you. Mm-hmm. Who wants to guess what the bread's made out of? This bread or you, the last bread? Uh, well, and it, there you go. Yeah, where did y'all find out? Oh, yeah. Lost Good thing we are the cooks here, huh? <laughs> you have no idea, actually. Um, Aren't they both made out of the same? Well, they are. Yeah. Yes, they are. Yeah. So either bread. Sweet potato. No. No. Is that is that like a banana bread though? Uh, what is this one actually? It, it's a maple spiced maple spice. banana bread pudding. Oh my god. Boom. Spice pumpkin. Spice pumpkin. Banana bread pudding. 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 Uh, I do not believe it has apple cider place. Oh, hold on, hold on. What is it? <laughs> Spiced pumpkin is really banana nice? bread pudding with maple apple cider. Ice cream in cider. Here with the ice cream. You can actually do that, and you don't have to do anything. Yes. So now, what do you think it's made out of? 
Is that kind of scary? I've played the game before, so. Yeah. Oh, well, that's true. You have, yes. Mm -hmm. mm. So who has this plate? It is not. Yeah. Uh, who on this table? Yeah. You haven't played our game, have you? Which are we talking about? Ida Red. Ida Red. They gave me that before I came set up. They did, didn't yeah. they? Yeah, that word gets out. It is actually on this sheet. Yes. He has a, he wants to take a stand at it. It is. It's turkey. It's turkey. Yeah, I could. Now that I now that I know, like I can taste it. I wish I could go for it. I could. Yeah. 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 I feel like you, could, you must put the turkey in like a meat machine or something to make it hairy. It's really, yeah, isn't that crazy? It's bizarrely crazy, right? That's just crazy. Yeah, it's uh, egg white, tapioca flour, a lot of fruits and seasonings and whatnot.